Last year on Good Friday, I offered a reflection on Jesus' last words in John 19.30, which reads, When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This week, I revisited that reflection from a year ago. We were less than a month into the lockdown of the pandemic, and when seeing myself a year ago, I couldn't help but think, you poor thing, you have no idea what's coming. My reflection was the carefully constructed one of a seminarian who'd read a bunch of commentaries and done extensive research, but I didn't even explicitly mention the pandemic. I alluded to it, but I remember wanting to really focus on Good Friday, and at the time it felt to me like I could compartmentalize and put the pandemic into a different box. You know, just a month in, it still felt like a little vacation that allowed me to work in my pajamas and make lots of bread. We're in a very different place a year later, and we've been through a lot collectively, And this year, I really don't feel like I can put the pandemic into its own separate box. It's been so much a part of our lives for the last year, and truthfully, the collective trauma and loss that we've experienced aligns quite naturally with Good Friday. Last year, I spoke about how it may seem like Jesus saying, it is finished, is the end of a series of failures. He's been beaten and mocked and rejected, and had everything stripped from him. But the author of John has carefully crafted the language throughout the gospel so that we're to see the lifting up of Jesus to the cross as an exaltation. The cross becomes a place where Jesus' messianic kingship is realized and proclaimed. And so it is finished isn't a cry of dereliction, but a recognition that he's completed his God-given mission making the love of God known to all people. Jesus' work may have been finished in that moment, but ours isn't. The work of the church was just beginning. Right now, I can't help but think of the millions of essential workers who have courageously and sacrificially done their jobs and willingly given up so much for the good of the rest of us. The medical professionals who show up day after day, donned in PPE and risking their own health. The teachers, many of you who are back at school now in person, even with all the new challenges that brings. Our essential workers have been faithfully fulfilling their calling throughout this crisis, and for so many, it's their way of following Christ. And church ministries all over the country, including ours, have been helping seniors find vaccines and addressing the growing food insecurity in our communities. And all of us who are wearing our masks and following protocols and getting vaccinated to protect other people are doing something really good and important too. It will be such a triumph for us when we've completed our mission related to the pandemic. We're not finished, but we will be. And we can look to Christ as an example of faithful service and fulfilling a God-given mission, even through some really, really difficult challenges. And though the pandemic may end, there will always be lots of work for us to do as Christians. Over the last year, there have been renewed calls for racial justice, and as the church, we must speak to injustice and work to dismantle systemic racism. And that's work that won't ever be finished in this lifetime. Another important detail in this passage in John 19 is when the author tells us that Jesus gave up his spirit. Just a few chapters earlier, Jesus told the disciples at the Last Supper that though he was leaving them, they wouldn't be alone because he was sending his spirit to be with them. I think the author is giving us a little nudge and reminder here and saying that when Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross, he didn't leave us alone. That spirit lives with us now and keeps Christ's memory alive. The spirit abides with us to guide us and offer presence, especially in the Good Friday moments. The pandemic isn't over. I I look forward to the day when we can breathe a collective sigh of relief and say ourselves, it is finished. 
But for now, we sit in the depths of Good Friday. But we sit with hope, knowing that triumph is just around the corner. And we sit with the peace of the ever-present Spirit of Christ. Amen. Thank you.